let's talk a little bit about levels of distinctiveness in U.S. trademark law. A mark that from the very first day of use serves to identify and distinguish a good and service from others is what's called inherently distinctive with regard to a specific class of goods or services. So say Honda from day one is inherently distinctive because nobody would be confused thinking that it was anything other than a brand name for a car. Now, importantly, levels of distinctiveness are considered with regard to a specific class of goods or services rather than whether it's a common word. So for example, Apple is a common word, but when used regarding computers, then it can serve as a trademark because people aren't thinking that it's describing computers, but rather the brand name for a company called Apple. Let's think about this a little bit more. There are two major types of distinctiveness. Inherently distinctive marks we just talked about, valid from day one, and so-called descriptive marks that don't on day one of use tell you necessarily it's a trademark, but over time you may develop an association with it such that you know, aha, this is actually a brand name. So the little um, speedy rabbit there is to remind you that from the very first day, the uh, inherently distinctive marks are valid, whereas the slower turtle could become a trademark but it takes longer. Now, inherently distinctive marks can be put on the so-called federal principal register, which gives lots of different benefits to its owner, whereas an initially descriptive mark can only be put on the supplemental register, which has fairly minimal benefits compared to the principal. Um, but basically, if you put, if you get rejected from your application because your mark is descriptive, you can get put there, and if you continue to use your mark for five years, then it's presumed that your mark then is distinctive and you can get moved over to the principal register. Now let's look at some further examples of levels of distinctiveness. And we are going to focus here on distinctiveness for words. So as we just said, the word apple is generic for the fruit. But the word apple is actually arbitrary for the company that sells computers and phones and other stuff. So generic is way at the bottom because that's not a valid trademark. And the purple arrow is showing you what is a valid trademark with things on top being stronger. So at the very top, are arbitrary words and also things that are fanciful, i.e. coined things. So the word Exxon is a made up word, so that is fanciful, whereas grape nuts is arbitrary for the cereal that is not grape flavored or including any nuts. Um, so the levels of distinctiveness is mostly for words. You could also look at the Apple logo and say, well, that seems somewhat fanciful in terms of um, it's an image. But for the most part, this works best for words um, in terms of the other categories, such as if you jump down to descriptive, for which there's a caution sign, this only works, if you remember, if there is secondary meaning. So the two examples here, the Weather Channel and Spray and Wash, they describe what these things do. So the Weather Channel describes a channel on TV about the weather and Spray and Wash actually describes what you do with this product. You spray it on laundry and then you wash it. But over time, we know both of these are brand names such that they are valid marks. Now, an intermediate level of distinctiveness, not the highest, not the lowest, is suggestive. Basically, the definition of this is that it requires some imagination for you to figure out what that mark uh, is a product associated 
for. So off uh, suggests that it's about getting bugs off you, whereas Pinterest suggests that it is providing you a way to pin interesting pictures on some board for you to keep. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an introduction to levels of distinctiveness. Thanks.